Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2016. Brought to you by Docker. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Seattle, Washington for a special presentation of SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We are here at DockerCon 2016. Our next guest is Mariana Tessel, the EVP of Strategic Development, formerly uh, VP of Engineering at Docker. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Great to see you. We, uh, had it, we saw each other uh, last week at HP Enterprise Discover. Yeah. Um, and they had an amazing deal a year earlier. They were talking about Dockerization, all the Docker trends, and this year, boom, huge deal with HP. And it wasn't just a Barney deal, or it wasn't just a Surface deal, there was some joint development on. This is a new role for you at uh, at Docker, even obviously in the trenches, doing engineering, great success, congratulations. Um, it's a phenomenal um, career. Now you're going to move on to engineer the ecosystem. So what's, right. the, what's your new job? <laughs> Tell us, what is strategic development? So as you know, or maybe you don't know, I actually have a lot of experience working with partners from VMware, and partners are extremely important for Docker as well. So I'm helping both on deciding some of the strategy, strategy as well as working and developing our ecosystem um, and figuring out how do we work in this complex world, world we in. So, so strategy kind of implies competitive strategy, company strategy, is that in the mix? Because it's a 3D chess game going on. Docker has been very, very successful. You made the market. Um, no doubt the success is, is uh, behind us with the ecosystem. Uh, but Docker Inc., the company, still has not really put the flag in the ground for a business model, yet you inked a deal with HP Enterprise, big deal. IBM's here, we got Cisco booth here. A lot of the tier one industry players are here with the, all the open source development goodness. So you also have some competitors potentially, co-opetition. What's the, what's the plan? What's your, what's your strategy plan for growing your ecosystem? Right, we have uh, one or two competitors, but you know, it, it, it is, uh, as you know, we do have uh, quite a few products that we are selling to the enterprises. We both have a SaaS product, Docker Hub and Docker Cloud, and we also have Docker Data Center, uh, which we've been selling for quite a few enterprises. In fact, um, quite a few of them so are talking. So you are talking. selling that product? Sorry, no, You're I'm just, the, 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 sorry, I'm just, just, just kind of to finish, so quite a few are going to be talking here at DockerCon. Okay. But you know, what I want to say is that we have worked with like HP and other partners to uh, both create plugins into our existing products as well as um, creating together a better solution uh, and a solution that integrates um, in, in, the, in, in the case of some of the hardware partners that integrates hardware and software together, make it very easy for users to consume. So um, that, that's one strategy we're going to go uh, forward with. We understand that when we go to enterprises and to data centers, we're not alone. There are other partners there, some of them existing, some of them are evolving, and we want to participate and be part of that, um, that what the customers are planning and what they're having there. So that, that's, that's, that's a, a key part, as well as understanding that, um, like I mentioned, plugins, um, users and, um, and, and ecosystem partners want to plug in into our platform. So we provided uh, a plugin, uh, plugin framework for them and we keep improving that uh, to integrate to, our, to Docker and then to integrate to our commercial products as well. Yeah, this is sort of a new world. Docker's approach is, is different than, than say VMware's. You've got an open source component, you talked about a SaaS component. As, as partners come to you, as you're trying to engineer this partner ecosystem, What's, what do you tell them that, that, that it's going to make a good partnership? What would you like to see from partners? What's, what makes it work? What makes it work so that customers get benefit out of it? What's, what's the right formula for somebody that comes along and says, we want to be on this you know, huge amount of momentum that's going on with Docker? Yeah, I mean, you're right um, with the fact that we're starting from an open source a project, but actually when it comes to partnerships, some of it is, is not that um, different. Um, what makes obviously a good partnership is that there's complementary products, right? I mean, if, if 
There is a highly overlapping product that's going to be, you can still do a partnership, but it's harder. Right, right. <laughs> so we're looking for, um, I would say, complementary products, but then also where there is enhanced value when you combine them together. Um, and, and again, an example, I'll go back to the example, when you take hardware and you take Docker data center and you put them all in a pre-tested architecture uh, that is validated, that is sold seamlessly, that is fully supported, that's a lot of value to the customer. So uh, non-overlapping, lots of value to the customers, and the third one is obviously desire uh, to partner on both sides. So these are some of the criteria we're looking for. Is there any particular white spaces that you see out there that are uh, um, enticing for either entrepreneurs or partners to innovate on? I mean, obviously orchestration, we've been hearing that, Kubernetes over the top, uh, but there's a lot of talk about automation, policy, security, identity, the management of all the containerizations that's coming into the market is an opportunity, but it's also a challenge. Is there a particular thing that you guys say, we Docker will take care of this, and this is all open white space for you guys? I think a lot of people are trying to figure that out. Where does Docker, where's the line between what Docker wants to kind of get their arms around to provide value, AKA competitive advantage, at the same time enable white spaces for partners and entrepreneurs. Yeah, and you can look at the unbelievable exhibit floor here and that gives you an idea. There's definitely a lot of white space in security and monitoring, uh, even in, in management. Um, obviously anything that runs infrastructure, we are not intended to do anything there, so yep. a lot of um, um, alignment there. Those are some of the examples. Um, again, uh, people are more creative than probably I can give ideas and uh, often people come up with uh, great ideas that we haven't seen before of integrating with a product and uh, value add, but those are so some of the So there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of opportunity. I would say there's a question of, you know, where, where is Docker going to go? And it's one question, but I also tell you, it's amazing to see some of the vibrant ecosystem already existing. So my advice, if somebody is new coming in and want to do uh, another uh, startup in this area is also to check what's, what's, what's already out. available because there's quite a few companies in, in all of the spaces that uh, I've mentioned. So it, it's not a completely blank sheet at, at this point. So not a completely blank sheet, but some nice white spaces. Got to be careful not to have too many people trying to do the same thing, basically. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, this is still a new space and we will see more and more opportunity over the uh, next uh, few years evolving, both around the products that we're building, but also in how people use it, and, mm -hmm. and you know. You know I'm really impressed with HP's um, messaging around, and their direction around composable infrastructure. And you know, HP tends to do things, they're either, you know, they, they, get a, they had converged infrastructure right years ago, but I think they're onto some of this composable infrastructure message. And the notion is make the, the infrastructure invisible to the developer, and using containers as part of that. Um, you were involved in that relationship with HP. What got them over the hump with Docker? Obviously, they, a year earlier, they were kind of already kicking the tires. They, we had them on the cube. Um, now they're all in with Docker. What's the, uh, what was the motivation? Just to add value to their gear? So, you know, actually, let me examine it uh, through the lens of the criteria that I outlined. So one, there is highly complementary uh, products between the two companies. Um, they provide infrastructure, we provide software on top. Yeah, they, by the way, they do have other software assets, but many of those software assets such as SideScope, et cetera, they're actually integrating well with our products. So, so that's kind of uh, number one. Uh, number two, uh, there is a value add to the user. Um, often there is a, a user that wants to um, buy infrastructure and want to use containers and having it pre uh, pre-configured and resolved between the two companies is um, much more efficient than each, every customer trying to create it by themselves. And the third one, there was a desire on both parties to actually uh, have really strong relationship. And our relationship that we announce is very, very uh, robust. It uh, goes all the way from uh, resale OEM type, type of uh, um, agreement into uh, reference architectures and combined architectures. So you guys are going do. down, getting down deep with HP. Absolutely, yeah. We're, we we have. It, I would say it's a meaningful relationship. That's that's. Now, a is way. it a coincidence that you were VP of engineering and now you're doing strategic development alliances? I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Getting more technical at the integration yeah. layer is that 
Was that a coincidence or is that part of the plan for Docker to but get more technical? I would say that many of our partnerships there has to be technical in nature and we have to understand how to integrate the, the product. So in that respect, it's, it's obviously was pretty critical. So th this morning during the keynote, you know, lots of announcements, lots of demos. I saw a bunch of tweets. People said, you know, Docker really gets this idea of making the developer experience seamless, making it very simple. You know, simple was over and over from Solomon. Um, that implies, you know, that, that Docker is going to continue to integrate. We saw, you know, Swarm, and but then Solomon's got this famous, you know, sort of batteries included but pluggable and removable. Like, wh when you talk to customers, which side of that? sort of teeter-totter do they, do they push more towards? Do they want more simplicity, you know, more integrated with Docker? Do they want more flexibility to you know, see where networking might go? What, what do you hear from the market, from customers and so forth? You know, I would say it really um, depends on the type of customers. Some of them, especially the ones that are starting out or they, you know, they have a lot of uh, um, freedom of choice or, or you know, they again like just planning their development, often they're happy to just take what's there and, and to move forward. The ones that maybe have particular need in let's say networking or they already have existing um, equipment and existing software, it's, uh, it, it's something that they understand they need to integrate with. Um, so uh, I would say it's really kind of depends on the layout of the customers, but we're, I'm always surprised by the number of user of customers that actually say, I'm actually happy to consume it as is. I'm happy to throw out some of the uh, stuff I've been using before and standardize on that. And you know, and I will tell you another thing that, that um, uh, I've seen is in big customers, you actually, it's not like one thing, or in the big users, you have some departments that will go a, a little bit more um, uh, you know, particular stack and some that again have maybe existing things they have to integrate with. So again, everybody depending on the need, our partners provide capabilities that are very specialized or that are really unique that, that customers really need and we want to integrate really well with them. So number one question I get regarding the Docker situation, mm -hmm. Docker madness as I say, is that you got Docker the company that you're executive at and also the ecosystem behind us. It's so damn confusing. Help me figure it out, John, what's going on with Docker? I get all the money, how are they going to make money? That's kind of an old news. <laughs> you guys are doing well, you got plenty of money, you're not going to go out of business. But really it's much more of a, where do I put things? Um, IT guys are starting to think composable, starting to think like Lego blocks. Obviously cloud under the hood is SDN, you got infrastructure as code. Now the developers are all on a, on a um, growth a lot of apps being built, which means more containers spewing all over the place. So the customers are thinking to themselves, where do I fit where? What's Kubernetes? Where does this fit? What about this startup? What do I buy? People, I'm being pitched. I'm the Docker partner of choice. I mean, right. are you, are you overbreeding Docker? Are we, are we, are we, yeah, is there you, you know, a big um, sense of it for us? Uh, one, one, one thing that, that I uh, recommend users do is also try to think through their entire process and entire uh, view of how they do development. And if they're truly embarking on this microservices and new app, then, then again, like this is an absolutely great tool for them. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a great tool regardless, but I'm just saying I think it's a uh, it's good idea for companies to step back and say, how do we want to really do development? Are we really committed to this world of full automation and DevOps and microservices. And after that, looking at what you already have existing, what do you have as far as constraints? Uh, and then look at other tools that are there. Some customers, for example, they want to run uh, um, Docker inside VM and that's a requirement because they invested a lot in that infrastructure. Okay, well yeah. that, that sets some parameters. Others say I want to be completely on the cloud. Others need a hybrid cloud. So I would say it kind of depends on your situation. Obviously, we would like to see a full um, Docker stack running like completely Docker, but we understand that we live in a world where there is choice and there are constraints and there is, Well, there's, there's a lot of this reality of like the stack, which is case by case basis, some reference designs, but there's also a lot of noise. To, uh, we were talking earlier. I mean, you got Cloud Foundry, I got Bluemix, I got Pivotal, like all these cloud guys, Azure, Google's here. So like, Cloud game is separate from the Docker situation, or is it? I mean, that's kind of the noise we're hearing, all this noise is coming in. 
You know, the way I think about the, the cloud, right, is, is, is again, if you look at um, AWS and Azure and all the others, you can think about them as um, a, a, an infrastructure, a very efficient, a very flexible infrastructure, but an infrastructure, and we can run uh, on top of everything. And then customers want to have a, a, users want to have a strategy where they have um, um, like a diversified, uh, view of their infrastructure and want a little bit on the cloud, a little bit on on prem, maybe some one m multiple clouds, and this is where the portability of Docker just makes it so much even um, beautiful for them to to kind of choose this 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 route. So, um, you know. I, I hope I answered your question because I forgot the, the, the end of it. <laughs> All right, so uh, we only have a few minutes left, so I'll go on the Microsoft question. <laughs> so what's the relationship with Microsoft today? Do you have uh, one, we, Azure? We have a very strong relationship with Microsoft. We, as you know, we have done uh, multiple technical uh, previews of the uh, Windows integration. You're going to hear more about uh, Microsoft during, um, um, you know, you can see sessions during the conference. But we understand that a lot of the users today are, are Windows uh, developers. They want to um, deploy on Azure or they maybe have hybrid infrastructure and we uh, are teaming up with Microsoft to figure out how we uh, work with that audience. Where do you see the integration points for Docker right now that you're focused in on that you want to see stability for, for you guys and where's the free for all? Yeah, for the uh, ecosystem. Right, I mean, we already have a, a plug-in, uh, we announced a, a plug-in architecture like months ago, and, and again, it's the kind of thing we're going to improve, so if you have like a particular, and many companies here with our uh, partner, technical partner programs, they integrate to that. If you have like a particular storage plug-in or a networking plug-in, um, you, you can integrate, uh, with, um, you can integrate really well. If you have a particular monitoring tool, there's a way to integrate as well. So that, those are the, the existing ones, and I expect us to provide more and more entry points. What those are exactly is, like again, some of them we know, some of them are we're going to discover as we also discover the need of the customers, um, and also into our commercial products and understand how we integrate <coughs> there. Mariana, thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing your insight as always, great. Final word for you to share is, what's the vibe of the show this year? What's the big takeaway? If you boil it out today and tomorrow for the folks watching, What's the big takeaway nugget from DockerCon 2016? You know, I think it's it's uh, it's really amazing to see the show grow from 500 people two years ago to 4,000 people. It's actually mind blowing. It's it's the vibe is really really. Um, I mean, it's but you can you can feel how vibrant it is, how amazing it is. I would still say the best attended booth yesterday was the Warriors game. Uh, you know, we, I, I never saw a line like this. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, and they lost, unfortunately. Of course, yeah. big game from the Bay Area. Thanks so much, and congratulations on uh, your success. 5,000 people here, close to 5,000, um, and uh, now in a new role. Um, Thank you so much. Technical integration at Docker. Mariana Tessel, EVP of Strategic Development Partnership Alliances. She's going to be setting the table for v VMware, I'm sorry, Docker. We were just talking about VMware. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining. You're watching theCUBE here. I'm John Furrier with Brian Gracely, live in Seattle for DockerCon 2016. We'll be right back.